I couldn't work for another record sleeve design company. I couldn't work for another record company. I couldn't be an art director in a company other than this. I'd buy Cocteau Twins Records, Colourbox Records. I like the idea of having them in my house against the wall with my rendition, my visual rendition of that music inside of them. This is personal, it's, 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 it is as personal as that. It's not the only way, it's not a business. Just how important do you think the label and the cover is as far as selling a record goes? To physically selling it, um, it's important to a very small minority of people who aren't already aware of uh, 23 Envelope and 4AD's work. It's, it's vital to the people who are aware of their work, um, just because in the same way as we get immense satisfaction from uh, improving or all of us that, that each sleeve that is done feeling that yes that that, that is going even further or just um, different to previous sleeves it's important that people who have associated 23 envelope with 4ad with certain groups that they see this continuity this progression going on and that it is still so vastly different from the mainstream that the first impression of a band is going to be what to see of the sleeve especially in the independent market that maybe they've heard 
maybe they've heard the record a couple of times on John Peel, and then the name or the, the image on the sleeve is the first sort of thing that they see of it. This, this abstract formal approach is, is what is um, different to most contemporary record covers, I think. Um, be partly because of the nature of photography and the nature of typography and design. The, the much more literal, you know, a, a logo that says the Cocteau Twins. There's no, there's no doubt about what it says. That it can be only re really be interpreted one way. And most photographs are much more literal. They're, they're quite abstract in, in the, the artist's intentions, but in their own nature, they're, they're much more literal. So we try to get around those things by producing images which are more, as I say, more abstract and more like the conditions of music, more, more formal and lyrical, and um, which, which have a, a more of a kind of emotional content rather than an intellectual one. Um, you know, the, the, Yazoo, the Yazoo cover, which we produced, for instance, um, it, was a, it was a photograph which I took in Paris. And um, Alison Moyer, um, when she saw the picture, wanted to use it for the cover. And she picked up on the, those aspects within the picture. She liked the fact that it was much more abstract than a lot of the photographs which she'd been looking at in people's portfolios and things. And apart from that, the very fact that it was of two dogs fighting against this spotted background. There were Dalmatians against a spotted background, which made it very ambiguous. Um, and the very fact that the title was called You and Me Both, um, she saw a kind of uh, parallel between the, the picture and their music. Just a second more I know I'll forget what I came here for My head was so full of things to say But as I open my lips All my words slip away
It's all vastly different, isn't it, from your work in uh, designing packages for food chains, for food companies before. Just how different is that? Yeah, it's another, it's another form of packaging. It's, it's cynically, it's, it's packaging of a product. But I think we've got a, more, a lot more opportunity in this to do something that's more sympathetic with the product inside, that's more sympathetic to the music. I've never been sympathetic to baked beans, but I've worked on baked beans packs for a lot longer time. And but never been satisfied with the final result creatively. I, I worked for a, a mainstream packaging design group that had a name for innovation, that had a name for creativity or whatever. But were forever frustrated by marketing strategy, by, by the client. Um, and would work on something like a, for, the, for, for the baked bean pack, for a baked bean tin, to work on that for nine months. And nobody recognised the difference between the previous pack. But it was just... I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a much more subtle approach that they're taking, perhaps. But I think it denies them a lot of creative potential. So I was working alongside very creative designers that would have all the creative ideas pushed to one side for the sake of the one that would sell. I mean, we never approach things from that angle. We never consider, well, people are going to be attracted more readily to this than they are to that. We always try to approach things that something that's going to be more true to the to the product, to the record, to the music. And baked beans have a, a very short lifespan as a product anyway. Yeah, I, I didn't like the idea of working on something for nine months and then people are putting it in the dustbin. I like the idea of people taking a record sleeve home. I think a lot of our record sleeves don't give everything away on the sleeve anyway, on, on, on the front and the back. But it's enough to intrigue, to want to take it home, to find out a little bit more inside on the, on the inner sleeve and then on the label. That's, that's what, anyway, that's what annoys me about um, these compilations of record sleeves produced in a book. The fact that they more often than not show sure the, just the front sleeve. Yeah, there's m much more potential at the back of the out. I think it's because everybody says our inner sleeves look better than our outer sleeves. I think it's because everybody says our back sleeves look better than our front sleeves. But I'm just trying to Im impress the sort of attention that can be given to the back of a sleeve, to the spine, to the label. Your name stands out so clear, your signature is there. It's always Yesterday, 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 yesterday
We know that you had a training in photography, for example, so is all the photography left to you? Um, generally, yes, but um, it isn't as cut and dry as that as such. Um, some of the covers, it would be hard to say whether it was um, fundamentally a design job or a photography job. Um, some of the things which looks quite, look quite photographic might have been basically a design piece which, which Vaughan might have worked on more than myself, or, or vice versa. It's, I mean, it's almost like one person coming up with the same ideas. He'll have ideas about the design, the typography. I'll have ideas about the photography. So I, w I wouldn't necessarily split the way we work. This is if he was a photographer, I was a designer. I think there's a lot of crossover between the two. Where do you think his strengths lie? His strengths? Yeah. His strengths lie in... For instance, if, if I was on a recent project, I've come up with an idea for a shot, a photographic answer to a graphic problem. And I've got a photographer, and he'd come out with his Hasselblads and his lights. And he'd come up with a, like, an acceptable photograph. And for the same problem, Nigel would pull out a 50 pence camera with a plastic lens and come up with something that was much more emotionally involved and had a lot more sort of thought about it than I don't think I don't think his work has any precedence. Uh, I think that's a, a quite a very refreshing approach to photography. That he doesn't hide any of the, the techniques. That if he's using a flash and it's going to bounce off the side of a car, a, where somebody else would pick up on that, and that's where you've got the technique from. He, he just gets on with it. It's like a very sort of unselfconscious approach to photography. I think the most important thing about our approach to record covers is that, and the most unique thing really, is that we we try to achieve um, an image quality which is is more abstract and closer to the, the feeling of the music, to capture the atmosphere and the, ca the more formal aspects of the music. Um, you know, we, do, we rarely read lyrics. And, and use that as a starting point. It's more that li through listening to the actual music. What is it particularly about the 23 envelope that you like, that you know you feel comfortable with alongside your music? It just sort of, well, Von and Nigel just managed to reflect our sort of uh, ideas and things visually a bit. It's much closer than anybody else could, I think. Elizabeth, do you sort of have lengthy discussions over what the cover should be like? Do you have a lot of input, a lot of say on what goes on the cover of your own records? We don't have big discussions, no. We just sort of, well, it's usually Robin will give them, he just needs to say one or two things to them. Just give them guidelines, sort of, uh, try and sort of convey the mood. But I mean, they often sort of come to the same sort of thing themselves just by listening to music. They actually, um, we send them tapes of the music as it's being made, so they actually experience that. And uh, they like they like to hear the tapes. I think.
You've had one or two bad experiences with video, haven't you? You haven't been too pleased with one or two things that have been released. I understand that 20... Just, just the one. Just the one? What was that, then? Uh, the video for Pair of Dewdrops Drops. And why was... didn't you like it? Oh, it was just horrible. It was... It, it was sort of a promo sort of thing. It was done in the highest, tacky, sort of worthless it was, it was waste of film. Everything it wasn't meant to be. I mean, uh, we, we talked to the director, so sort of. we, we couldn't actually tell him what we wanted it to be like. Cause we didn't have an idea, because we're not like that, was it? Uh, so we said what we didn't want it to be like. It actually turned out all the things we disliked, what we didn't want. But the next one that we did, we had a good idea ourselves, what we wanted it to be like. And Bob and Nigel got involved as well, and it's come out much, much to our sort of satisfaction. It's good.
Is that something that will develop in the future? Because I know that they have big plans for video, don't they? Can you see yourselves maybe getting together in that field with them soon to work on other projects? Yeah, I should think so. There's talk of um, a long video, maybe 45 minutes or something. We want to make it different to your usual sort of music video, where it's just a, a compilation of promos straight after another thing. We want it to be a whole sort of thing in its own right. There's plans to do a, a Cocteau Twins video stroke film that, um, not, not from a, a, a pop promotional angle, but there's something that's more of an extension of the sleeves that would take a situation where we've taken a still from and extend that, make that move. Hopefully something something that you can watch while you're listening to the music, something you could watch while you're listening to the music three times and not just once. That doesn't give everything away the first time. Yeah, hopefully we'll have a bit more time to spend on shooting it as well rather than sort of one day, two day situation for pop promos. Mm. To get things really, you know, how we want them. And again, as I say, more of a, a direct relationship with the group in that, so that they, we get more feedback from them and it's um, more, you know, personal to them as well as to us. I want to talk to you a bit about a film that mm -hmm. you've been making for some time because um, it actually opens up a whole new area for you both, mm -hmm. both you and Vaughan, in that I know that video production is maybe a long-term project of yours. But going back to that film, mm -hmm. just tell me a little bit about what that's about. Um, well, it's basically about relationship between a man and a woman, as, as is seen through the eyes of the man in his memory. It's basically trying to um, portray a series of events that in such a way that it's closer to how an individual perceived those events as opposed to how it happened, an external, an external reality. It's more of a, an inner reality. Um, and so the whole fil film takes place, as it were, in the mind of the narrator. So there's various sections of dialogue in the film. And to help this very subjective viewpoint of things, it's, it's quite highly stylized in terms of lighting and um, physical juxtapositions of characters to emphasize um, the internal relationship between them. It's largely a visual film. It's about half an hour long, black and white. And um, I think the mood, the, the very textural feel of the, the visual side of it is, is very similar really to some of the work we've done for record covers and things. It's, a, it's an extension of the same kind of, you know, it's of my photography, if you like.
desespero por verte junto a mí. Callar y quisiera. I want to talk to you a bit about a pet project of yours, this mortal coil. Um, as I see it, it's basically a collective, a loose collective of different musicians. I was wondering where 23 Envelope fitted into that situation. Um, I wouldn't, I'd never, I feel that the, the sleeves that they've done, for, coincidentally, the two of the three sleeves of, of different mortal coil records have been existing photographs that uh, the, the, the first single was a photograph that Vaughan had and I was familiar with and when the single was done then it was very easy to go to that and say I'd, that I'd like him to incorporate it on, on the sleeve. The, the, the design, the, the photograph on the outside of the, the LP cover was actually done for a shoot for another group. It was considered inappropriate which I was really pleased about because I just started, or we just started working on the LP. Um, I might have, no, I'm sure Vaughan didn't put any any uh, extra effort into into finishing the sleeve because it was because I was here every every minute whilst he was doing it. But I think it was one of the most successful sleeves that he'd done, and it helped it enhanced the, the very to me personal feelings of of that record because he was here doing it, and I saw how much uh, he put into it. I mean, we, you know, we we spoke about finer details of label, etc., etc., discussed how it would, would be done. That was really enjoyable. Of course, I took his, his guidance all the way. I mean, just because I was involved with a record, I didn't want to start behaving like an artist and, and be perhaps uh, temperamental about the way it should, should look. Just how proud are you of the visual aspects as well? Are they a great source of pleasure to you? Yeah, they make. <laughs> um, just because they're, they're so they're so good, I, I don't 
I don't know of any of any um, partnership or, or design company that really is working as consistently um, in an, in what is, I suppose, a non non commercial area. Yeah, they're they're, they're vital to us. Christopher Jeffrey will sing a Coco Bear song. What is the name of the song in your language? Oh, Wallaker. And what's it all about in England? We all get right and home. We look back and get sort of cloud of dust behind us. And what was the cloud of dust caused by? Color box. Color, 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 color box. What do you think? If I could start off by asking you, just how important do you think the contribution of 23 Envelope is to your records? Well, it's quite important because uh, we're, we're a group that tends to have no image at all. We don't like presenting people's faces and stuff like that. So it is very important to us, really, like for people to make a connection with the sleeve and with the record. But m most importantly, is actually with the record because we, we're not interested at all in presenting our faces 
or anything, are we? Yeah. Really? Do you think, then, Martin, that the visuals that they come up with are a strong representation of the music that you make? Well, there's... The visuals are something we can hide behind, which is the whole thing about it. We try to sort of make something we can hide behind. Why is that? Because we're shy. <laughs> we're shy. We're shy. <laughs> so do you think that 23 Envelope are effective in uh, creating this barrier for you to hide behind? I think for other groups they are, aren't they? Mm. But well, they are to a certain extent with, with us, us because they're norm plus. We don't have our faces uh, I mean, splattered all over the covers. Uh -huh. I mean, some of them, when we were first presented with them, the idea is... I mean, th this one here, right, I mean... But they are nondescript. Yeah, it's very, it's very nondescript, and we, didn't, we actually didn't like it at first, but to me, it's grown on me. Anyway, but it's, it's completely nondescript. This one, I thought, I think is his worst one for Why? us. Um, well, it did actually come out as a, a first version. There was our first release on 480, and then this was the second version. But I mean, it was too much stuck in his style. That, that's the thing about, about Vaughan, is that he has his lettering, you have his lettering there, yeah. and you have all those, those little silly yellow bits on it, and he tends to use them with a lot of his groups. It's like a, a certain style that is Vaughan, yeah. which is good. I mean, it's good if Vaughan says to himself, I am, I am someone who, who does LP sleeves or whatever, then it's good if you are that sort of person to keep a certain thing running through it. But for us, it's like we have to try and oppose that. We have to try and get him to come out of that, but mm. still keep his whatever he, he thinks is running through his stuff. Mm. You see what I mean? So, so that's why we had a lot of problems yeah, trying to get I him mean, to do this. Right. With this, I mean, I don't know whether you've heard no, the records at all. Yeah, I know, but I don't know whether you've heard the records. Right. This is, uh, we, we weren't exactly pleased with the record because we wanted, this was after this, right? right? Which we had a lot of. We had a lot of trouble getting this this one done. Right, we, uh, I can Vaughan, see why. Vaughan's actually his the idea we told him was we want something quite revolting on the cover, and you know and that was it and that was his uh, his thing. But I mean to us it was it created it's stuck in a lot more people's memory than other work other work that he's done. Colourbox have chatted to us and they've stated that the working relationship with yourselves hasn't been that easy. In stark contrast to your big areas of agreement with the Cocteau Twins, they felt that it's been a bit of a battle actually producing artwork that they're happy with. Where do you see the problem being there? Um, very definitely. Uh, graphic design is about communication. We're not graphic designers, so we, we, aren't, we aren't really very good at communication. I don't think we've communicated ideas to colour box they haven't communicated ideas to us it's a situation where both bands would deliver the music and we come with the finished result and perhaps we haven't responded as readily to colour box as we have to cocktail twins what about this then the first cover here there's a tail of a fish in there and you were saying robin that you're not very keen on fish uh or this particular yeah. one, anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, it's there. <laughs> mm. Well, I mean, that's that's one of our problems that we. Uh, I think that sort of illustrates one of our main problems that we we talked about. The whole idea, the initial idea, was to have, well, listening to the music and the sort of the, the textural feel to it, and sort of a mixture of colours and things. We decided to set up a situation in a little, build our little aquarium and have a few colours floating into each other and have a single element underneath all those colours. Are you still listening? Uh, there, there, there was like a couple of fish. So we'd been away down to Patterson. Is it Patterson? Park. <laughs> Park. Uh, to find a couple of fish to be swimming about underneath, you know, to, to add a little bit of interest. Mm. And come the day when everybody looked at the shots, the fish became secondary, mm. or mm. It, indeed not wanted, and it was just the colours that were wanted, and the fish that we'd found, the fish that we'd fished, didn't, well, well, they died, because, well, what we wanted... <laughs> <was> <laughs>
The way we'd introduce the colour was through car spray paints. We didn't like that too much. Uh, it wasn't discussed with ecological ex aspects, was it? It was um, discussed with the nature of these fish. These particular fish <laughs> couldn't, couldn't live in car spray paint. They um, had to have water. They all so. went on the side. You know how fish do uh. when they can't breathe through the gills and stuff. So I went on the side no. and sort of just floated off. Uh, can we talk about this one? I'm fed up with this one. All right. <laughs> now that's much more like what this one should have been like. And it was all from the same shoot. Why did you say that, Robbie? Because that's more like what we talked about. <laughs> yeah. But it's still, a, it's, it's wonderful. Look. Very good. This is very oh, good. Thank you, Robin. Thank you very this much. This is very good. <laughs> also, this is... This, this one, the, um, this is, uh, that, we wanted this, uh, they, they got it right by this time. Same as the colours to come merge, you the know. On it Didn't they right. <laughs> mm. Wanted the colours to merge? Yeah. We wanted the, um, <laughs> you know, kind of receive <laughs> feel to it. Um, you know, with the little red flower in the centre. So it's kind of abstract, you know. Uh -huh. yeah. Obscure for obscure sake. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah I mean, people, people <laughs> might argue that, it, you know, I, it, it is very hard to analyse your own work. I mean, I know mm. you must hate doing it, but um, a point that the colour box were making was that, you know, it does tend to get a little bit over-pretentious and a bit too precious sometimes. Yeah, they've been drinking a lot, though. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> So what do you think sets apart a 23 envelope from your average, everyday record designer, Robin? Uh, I think if you look at the, the product or whatever, with, with most record designers and slaves and things, you can, you can look at them and say, oh, like certain late 70s and everything. The 23 envelope things seem sort of timeless. You can't really tell where they're from or when they're from. How do you react to people that maybe accuse you of being pretentious or precious about what you do? Because obviously you have to pay a lot of attention to detail. It's your job to. Mm. And yet, of course, that provokes quite strong criticisms often from people that maybe not always appreciate visual imagery, that, you know, you're being much too pretentious and precious about what you do. I think there's quite a difference between the words pretentious and precious. Um, the, you know, the precious aspect is, is the kind of thing that um, Colourbox would criticise us for. They'd, right. they'd say we were too precious about our, in our approach. Um, but if, I think if you look at the finished sleeves, um, it, I don't think they appear, a lot of them appear particularly precious in, in terms of, uh, to me, a preciousness implies some kind of more an analytical, logical series of steps rather than a kind of intuitive, spontaneous, spontaneous approach. And I think the kind of images that we produce obviously have that in them because you can't break them down into any particular mm. structure are, or how, how they've it's, emerged. That it's irrational, that it's whimsical, that it's, that it's everybody else's interpretations that are as relevant as ours. That, that is the very, very reason why we don't, in fact, produce um, layout pads with, with ideas in originally because a lot of the things we'd like to try couldn't actually be explained in in a, in a little thumbnail sketch or in words initially mm. anywhere. It, it, that's why we're lucky here and that the, the bands do in fact rely heavily on sort of faith, faith in our... Um, yeah, they have a confidence I think that's grown up over the past few years. I think you've also caught us today trying to talk like the written word and normally I laugh all the time, and I'm not as serious as this about things. Yeah. We're not really used to trying to verbalise what we what we do in images, really. Yeah. Look, look, I can smile. <laughs>
Et ce personnage mystérieux qui nous habite et qui nous dicte les ordres euh, et de, tout à coup nous dicte des œuvres euh, que nous avons longuement euh, méditées pour les lui, euh, pour, comment dirais-je, pour l'introduire.
Slides. 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 Slides.